Greetings! In part one, you met Greg Daria. He works as part of an edit team on big movies like these, and as a solo editor on independent films like these, all of them on Avid. As you learned in our cliffhanger, Greg is cutting an ultra-low budget film for friends and decided to do it on Final Cut Pro, a system he has never used before. Here in part two, we'll check back in with Greg about a month after starting this new film, and we'll see what he has to say. <laughs> Michael Yanovich, this one's yours. Take it away. Oh, thank you. So we're back. That's Mike Matsdorf over there. I'm Michael Yanovich. And below us, under the spoiler alert, I assume it's Greg Dari again. I you assume you correctly. These are the Greg protocols. So, spoiler alert. What's the spoil? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> he offers thumbs a up. thumbs up. <laughs> Unsolicited thumbs up. That's I like that you spent the time drawing that. That's great. That's why I took five minutes extra. <laughs> you know you, why you had the time to draw it? Because you've been cutting in Final Cut. It's faster editing. <laughs> How's that for a segue? <laughs> I like that. So uh, it's been about a month. You got your new laptop at the beginning of February. Like, I think the fourth or something. It's been less than a month. It's a little less than a month. Yeah. And what, what did you get laptop-wise, just for the, for the curious? Um, because Michael is more articulate than I am. Michael, please. Uh... You got the new M1 MacBook Pro. Okay, great. So, you know, this is, uh, they're still fairly new. So it's the only model out right now. It's new M1 chips. That's what Greg has. And I have the, mini, uh, I have the M1 Mini and it's, it's great. I, I'm waiting yeah. for the IMAX person. Uh, you know, I, I, I spent a long time deliberating um, what computer to get. And I didn't consult anybody when I purchased it. <laughs> the lies Perfect. total lies anyway we're here at the end of february mars 2020 this thing just landed last week i, I was at the i got a tour jpl and i got to see it so when i got the shirt so oh I your t-shirt the mars before, landing or nice. before they launched it which was kind of neat. it was mars 2020 because it launched in 2020 uh anyway just landed and just like that miracle greg is now cutting on final cut so you had, to is, learn, you had to learn it from scratch. You'd never touched it before. That's a terrible, <laughs> terrible segue. Something is, as way we do amazing them. as that. <laughs> <laughs> and what are your overall impressions? Love it. Thumbs up. I, I, I can't. Um, and, and again, you guys have to keep in mind, you guys had already tutored me through your videos. So there, there was a frame of reference that I had to work with. Again, I wasn't jumping in without any knowledge whatsoever. And, and yes, uh, again, of course, there, there is the, the normal sort of growing pains and fits and starts. But I mean, Michael, you and I uh, have talked about it uh, probably less than a week. In, ter in terms of the elementary editing that I'm doing. Because again, I would equate this with, I, I know this is a Maserati and I'm driving it like a Kia right now. But for the purposes of, of moving down the street, no, no issues. It, it, I love it. And you, you're not going deep into it yet. It takes time to learn any software and get into the deeper aspects. Correct. You're editing. You know, I, I don't know what you're not working with that you need to edit a film. I mean, you have all the tools you need. Look, within a week, um, I was loading in sound effects and music and we can, you know, we can talk a little bit about that. Like at first, again, I was like, I wanna just be able to try and cut the picture and, and get a sense of how that works. Can I ask a question, Greg? Where, of course. Um, so I know this was the, this was the case with me and Yanovich and most other people I know, where they have a moment where they're like, uh, or not one moment, but several moments where you're like, oh, <laughs> that. Sorry, my cat's just destroying place around here and things jiggling. It's not an earthquake, people. It's okay. Um, but uh, what were some of the moments for you where you're like, oh, okay, I understand. Uh, uh, yeah, you throw uh, a couple I'll, out there. I, I'll tell you 
the one that blew my mind and I texted Michael about it. Um, I cut a sequence and uh, there were, and I, and I cut it with music and I had very specific, I had a very specific B-side music hit. And I watched the scene and I put it to bed for the night and I woke up the next day and I was like, nah, there are two shots that I need to slow down. I just need to do it. I'm like, ah, shit. That means I'm going to have to figure out how to redo the music. And I don't really know the system very well right now, but so be it. It just, the two shots just felt like the need to slow down. So here was the first revelation. In Abbott, when you slow down a shot, you have to, you have to make certain that you pick the anchor so that you're in and you're out, stay the same. Okay, right? so you're talking about slowing down the speed of a shot, not, not slowing down the speed of your edits. Yes. Okay. So, I'm, so I've got to put this, this uh, motion effect on two different shots, which obviously are going to change the length of, of the cut, and it's going to throw out of whack the meticulous music that I had done, because it was very, very specific. All right, I'm going to do it. So the first revelation was, oh, wait, in Final Cut, when you do a motion effect, it automatically knows the in and the out. There's no adjustment I have to do. Great, because that's what I want. It's like, I already selected that out. I just right. want it to so be you're, slower. Let me, just, let me just put that in a little bit different language for the listener. So uh, you, the in and the out... We're gonna cut that part out. Phone call transition. Um, so just to clarify, the in and the out points were already set yes. in, in Final Cut. And when you did your speed change, they still were the in and the out frames yes. that you started with. Okay, so in Avid, you apply the motion effect and it retains the duration of the clip, but changes the speed. So then you're in, either you're in frame or out frame. I don't know exactly how it works. I almost never use that. Um, but uh, that then you have to readjust and find your out frame again. It, 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 I mean, again, and I think what it is, you know what, let's not get into the specifics of Avid. But yes, the, the, the point being, Avid doesn't retain an, a, a designated in and out. And you have to do a little extra work to maintain your in and your out. Mm -hmm. Final cut, w once you've selected your in and out before you do anything, if you apply something to it, it doesn't throw all that out. So I didn't have to sit there and go, oh, wait, I've got to find this out point that I really like. It's, it's just slowed down. It's going to hit that out point, you know. Right, right. And I, I think that that is the nature of that solution and your experience is the lack of tracks that are asking to stay locked and in sync holy mary locked and in sync uh so because of the way stuff is attached in final cut in relation to sync exactly and then here so when that happened i was like oh that's great but here was the other thing that i loved it pushed everything down and maintained on the b side the specific music edit on the B side. So I didn't have to refine that and readjust. All I needed to do was just extend the music on the A side mm -hmm. like that. Right. I, I like when that happened, I think I, at a certain point, I just texted Michael about it that I was completely in love. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Well, I, I, uh, I, so, so, I grab screenshots of these texts, by the way. So great, oh, you great. do? Oh, yeah. Oh, so, this. so we're going to go over. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, you suck. Um, <laughs> this is a total personal privacy invasion here. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. So, so just to just to define what what we're hearing for for you. So, you had the music connected because that's the way it works in Final Cut to a particular frame in your clip, on your video clip, and when you whenever you adjusted stuff the connection maintained its position. Um, and so did you figure out that you can also move those connection points? Um, I suppose, Michael, you have that 
that uh, text as well when I was watching the the hands-on tutorial. Yeah, I have a couple. And, <laughs> and saw that. Now I haven't at this juncture. I haven't had to deal with that function, and mm -hmm. I know that it exists. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I said, you know, I I. I haven't done a deep dive. Uh, again, I'm treating this thing like a Kia right now. So that was, uh, look, that that to me, I was in love. The, the other, again, basic thing, it's trackless editing is the only way to go. Can I just show you guys this real quick? So look in the back. All right. Sorry, that was, awesome. that was very like, oh, interesting. Yeah. All right, guys. I don't. I don't want to step on your toes, but do not cut that out. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, 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 it's editing. We don't do editing here. It's all. It's all saying. <laughs> Sorry, it's, you were... if it's too if it's too distracting here, I'll do this for now. Okay. No. <laughs> that that was hysterical. Something okay. to look at. The other and us. <laughs> you were saying right. editing. I think you were saying. Oh, look, is it a he or she? She. She's up on the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the door's open, that's where they go. They, they want to be at the highest point possible to catch the birds that are outside. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, uh, again, trackless editing, it's the only way to go. Like, let, let's, uh, and you guys can probably articulate better than I, but let, let's, let's, define why trackless editing is so much better than the avid world of tracks. And, and so I'll start and then you guys can jump in and, and redefine it better than I can. Every time you create a new sequence in avid, you have to add X amount of tracks, depending upon how many tracks you're gonna use on that show. Uh, you know, most shows that, that I've worked on, it's anywhere from 12 to 16. And for and, and just to chime in right there, Greg, the, what I'm working on right now in Avid, uh, 29 tracks. Yeah, which is, uh, if you, do you want to, let, let's segue, talk about the, the struggles of working with 29 tracks as opposed to if you were doing it in Final Cut, because you can describe this better than I can. Well, let's not, let's not, I, I will, but let's not go there yet. I want you to finish what your, your thought about uh, the, the tracks and, and how you're using them. Uh, okay, so uh, again, depending upon, you know, a show, uh, I'll do anywhere from 12 audio tracks to 16 audio tracks to three or four video tracks, right? And so you have to, every, like every time you create a new scene sequence, you have to go through that process. And then the next thing that you have to do is, and the reason that you do this is, you know, X amount of audio tracks are designated for dialogue slash production. X amount of tracks are designated for sound effects and X amount of tracks are, are designated for music. Uh, it's just standard operating procedure, but where it becomes a pain in the butt is, okay, now I'm gonna start cutting and I'm gonna add sound effects. And you have to make certain that you, that you designate and you send the sound effects to a certain designated track. And then when you do music, you have to do the same thing. And be sure it's another a, track isn't lit up so you don't accidentally delete something. It, it, yes, exactly. Yeah. So it's it's a process. Yeah. And do you work in all mono tracks because you have such a meager amount of tracks in the album? Um, well, I, you know, well, are we talking about like the stereo pairs? Because we yeah, can get yeah. in. Well, so, that made, my, my point was that you have multiple kinds of tracks on the Avid. And so like the, the setup that, that I'm currently doing, there's uh, seven or no, there's eight tracks for dialogue. Yeah. There's uh, six tracks uh, for mono sound effects. Uh, I think four for stereo sound effects, something like that. And then uh, more stereo effects. And then a five one track down the end for stuff that we get that's already going to be in five one. And so there's the tracks have to be a different, the right kind of track too. Yep. 
Um, and so that's, uh, you know, that, that's a lot. And some, some of the stuff you all might only need for one thing. It, it, and to elaborate on the right time, um, you can't cut a stereo track into a mono track. It just won't let it happen. And you have to mm -hmm. be cognizant of that. Um, and the other realistic thing is imagine on, on your screen, you've got 29 tracks of real estate that you have to deal with and yeah. navigate. It's yeah. just, it's not good. I have an entire monitor for my timeline. I've arranged, uh, I've arranged the monitors vertically. So okay. timelines in the bottom monitor, other stuff's in the top monitor. So, so is it literally one, one monitor on top of another or left and right? Um, no, no, I'll show you. This is some live action people. So okay. whoops, hold on. Um, okay, oh. so that's where the timeline lives. Yeah, and that's where everything else lives. And I'm on the Avid 2020, so it's, you know, sort of I've got it all dialed in with particular this and that's here and there. But um, yeah, that, so I, the mouse just skates from top to bottom, and I like it that way. Yeah. Now, if you were cutting in Final Cut, would you have to have that same setup? Um, I'm gonna say, I generally prefer Final Cut on one monitor. Yeah. I have sort of an ultra wide monitor, um, the 21 by nine ratio. Uh, and so I, I think Final Cut works best in one monitor. Um, I have I have used a full screen timeline because I like having a full screen timeline sometimes um, just because you know it can get deep and dense. And if yeah. you do, um, let's just tangent on, onto the timeline for a second where you can have like your, each clip, whatever it is, just sort of all hovering towards the top of the, the timeline in total disarray, or you can separate the roles so you can see uh, the roles one by one set at a time. Uh, so it would be, you know, dialogue and music and effects or however you choose to order them because you can order them. But then if you expand the roles where it's like, oh, I want all of the characters from this particular thing like uh, i work in animation so there's a lot of scratch dialogue say, okay so we could have all the characters you know one two three four five all in their separate roles all expanded out so depending on how far you want to expand and contract the timeline you can show what you want or not and right. search what you want or not there's a this is we might end up cutting this part out but i always want to share this story because it applies directly so um i was working on the lego ninjago movie and we were trying to there's someone there, there was a job that someone had to do, which is to find all the scratch that was left in the movie, the temporary dialogue. Okay, and so this was five reels, long movie, ton of characters, ton of scratch, because there had been months and months and months of people randomly recording and stuff. And so the job was to go through shot by shot, clip by clip in the timeline, and make notes of where the scratch was. On Avid. And, on Avid, correct. And I was like, oh my God, this is a nightmare. So I exported an AAF from that and uh, I wriggled that into Final Cut and I was able to expand out like 72, what would have been 72 tracks deep of each individual character. And you could search all of them. And so you could know immediately what was scratched if you'd taken them the time to label them correctly. Um, and so it's thinking about it in terms of uh, just finding things and knowing and not having, there was like a whole day where like two people would have to sit on the Avid going clip, 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 scratch, no, scratch, yeah, scratch, no, scratch. And it was crazy. Like the, <laughs> the man hours were just incredible. So, yeah. That that's, sounds like hell. <laughs> it's a hard job. Yeah, no question It's a hard job. It. Yeah. Wow. All right. And I I want to go over these, uh, just to, I'm going to read a couple of these screen grabs from text because I want to show your journey because I think, <laughs> oh. I, you know what? I protest. I would not have done this if I knew that these words were going to come back to haunt you. <laughs> and, and I want to go like from the beginning and I'm hiding all the bad stuff. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not, you know, if someone wants to know the bad stuff, uh, we'll talk. About <laughs> that, that, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be paid content. That's right. <laughs> this, connecting this is the very beginning. This is when you're in the tutorial. Connecting clips. Holy shit! I'm pretty darn sure I'll love this feature. 
my animal brain can't wait to apply this to actual cutting. Conceptually, I can see it's a game changer. That's cool. And then it remembers keywords, which you posted twice, the second time with many exclamation marks. Uh, holy shit, I slow down a shot and it pushes everything with it and keeps sync. Dude, why did you wait so long to tell me about this final cut thing? <laughs> uh, do I love that when working with tracks and I extend the head of the B side past the tail of the A, the A automatically drops down? Yes, I do very, very much. Do I have to go back to Avid? And I'm just scratching the surface. I just don't think about tracks liberating. I mean, that's it. And that's good. I, I want to do. I want to do another one of these after you uh, go back to Avid. He's going and, back and to you, Avid. <laughs> and you hit the. You hit the. Oh my God! What am I doing? Wall. It's going to be great. Well, here's the Avid project, right? It, 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 yes. Yeah, see, here's the thing. I start a, a project in in a couple of weeks, um, mm -hmm. and I'm actually lamenting that <laughs> that i have to go back to add it so we have some questions from a couple of uh viewers who have some uh john matthews says you're probably not at the final cut stage yet fine cut stage sorry but trimming is a big thing on avid how does final cut compare that's one thing a lot of avid editors really love their trim tool and what do you think about trimming on final cut in general um I, look, I, I don't know if this is going to answer the, the, the question correctly, but uh, I believe that there was a, a text that I sent you about this. Okay, uh, I'm going to I'm going to trim the tail, and I find uh, the last frame that I want on the tail, right? And let's so hypothetically, let's say there's 28 more frames after that, right? When I hit the end, it automatically, I don't have to hit the out and I can just lift and boom. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it, you're, you're talking about a lift. So, and what were the results on all the sound effects and music and stuff that was under that? There was no, there was no effect. So you didn't have to worry about turning on and off a bunch of tracks. Ex and that goes back to the whole trackless element, correct? Yeah. At least to me, it, it felt that way. What about when you're trimming, like, you know, selecting an edge and using it and going back and forth? Do you, do you, here's what I know people miss in, in the Avid. And I, I think the Avid, the Avid trimming is, is so complex to me. I, I, I don't care for it, but I know how to use it. Um, but uh, when you're like the way some people like to work, they open up the, the rollers on however many tracks they need to open up the rollers on to keep things where they want to keep them. Um, which is something you don't need to do in Final Cut because of the clip connections. And then they, they'll cycle it by hitting the space bar. Like they'll, it'll play around the cut and then they can trim with the keyboard, trim with the keyboard, trim with the keyboard uh, until they get just the transition that they want. Is that something that you use that you might miss that you care about? Uh, I didn't miss it. I, I understand why some people would miss it. This particular project, it, it's um, it's like a, a road movie and it's character based. And as I told the filmmakers, to me, it's all about character. So it's going to be all about dialogue. So my trimming, if you will, was all dialogue based. And, and, and I'm going to divert for a moment to explain that. I worked when I was an assistant years ago with a, an editor who gave me one of the best tips that I still retain to this day. And again, this pertains to dialogue-based scenes. He told me, think of it as radio play. And I said, radio play, what are you talking about? Cut it for the flow of the dialogue, close your eyes, listen to it as if you were listening on the radio. If the flow feels right, open your eyes and try and adjust the picture accordingly. Hmm. I, I, I've retained that to this day. And, and there, was, there was a sequence in this movie uh, that had a lot of different moving parts. But again, I just completely, I cut the radio play, I cut the best version of the dialogue and then figured out how to adjust the, the picture. So in, in doing the trimming, 
you know, the, the, the thing, the, the two thing, the two things that I've done, and I don't know if this is correct technique, but again, Michael had shown me is to separate the audio track from the picture, you know, so that you can manipulate. Not detaching it. your, oh, your, Double clicking so it pops down below. I want to, yeah, not detaching the audio in this case. Okay, and I, I, I'm, you know, I'm sure I'm gonna blow it on the nomenclature. That's right. But so that's step one for me, and then step two is going into the trim tool, and then just manipulating the picture to. to so the first thing I would do is, okay, where do I want the dialogue to come in? And I'm not thinking about the picture, right? So. Mm -hmm. If it's like, okay, I want on the B side, I want this audio to come in at this point. I'll do that. Then uh, what's the term, Michael, for the, the tracks? Dising um, expanding the audio. Expanding. Yeah. Ex so I'll expand the audio, then go into the trim tool and then adjust picture accordingly. That, that's, that was my technique. It worked flawlessly. Does, does that make sense? Do, do I yeah. need to? Yeah, no, you're doing it. No, it, it, I've heard this from a lot of app editors, the asynchronous editing, basically what, what Mike was talking about. And Final Cut doesn't have that. And to be fair, I wish you could select three or four audio tracks at once in Final Cut and trim them at the same time. But you, so I you, you, clips. you can, you can, and I, but I never under it has something to do with like option and bracket and, and all that. And uh, but, with keyboard. Yeah. Not yeah. I mean, I, I don't think. I always think, and maybe it's just because I'm more keyboard or I'm more mouse centric, um, that you know, the goal of the trimming is to the goal of the asynchronous trimming and having all the the uh, the rollers open or on or off or whatever is just to keep sync. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, and and so if you're uh, if you're keeping if you don't need to worry about keeping sync or chopping your music in half and then just adding a quick dissolve because you don't want to deal with fixing it. Um, that's that's the goal. So I mean, I, I guess we've answered John's question. There you go, John. And the other <laughs> one is uh, Raphael Gamboa. What do you think it would take for Final Cut to be accepted? This is a question we've had many times. What do you think it would take for Final Cut to be accepted by Hollywood? And are there things only Avid can do that are simply too essential for major narrative productions? Or is it more cultural inertia? Uh, I think personally for a film like Final, for Fast and Furious 9, getting where, where you have, there were three editors on it. I don't know how many assistants you had on it. You had a visual effects editor. You have so many people on it. And Final Cut, you, can, you could make it work. If everyone really wanted it to, you could make it work. But it doesn't have the infrastructure built in to do it seamlessly within the software. You'd have to go with, probably some third party options there. But for independent films, like next time you cut an indie film on your own, would you have a preference? And, and what do you think it would take for that? The, the questions that I have, um, and again, part of this will require me spending more time with Final Cut and doing a deeper dive. I haven't done any, I haven't done any split screen work. There, there were a couple of times where I was like, hmm, maybe I'd like to try and do a split screen here and I just moved on. Do you mean like um, a locked off shot with dialogue where you have, where you can't see the split screen? Or are you talking about a visual kind of cool thing where there is a split screen? Uh, no, I'm talking about like, let's say you've got, you're cutting from uh, the A side to the B side. And on the B side, you've got uh, a character who's in a totally different position from the A side, but you, you like the performance from the B side. So to deal with the continuity, you'd love to see if you could grab um, a piece that you could do a picture, a, a split screen. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, so that, so that you're not catching the continuity. Uh, and then the other thing that I would also add, and this isn't so much for me, but uh, you know, obviously, uh, Michael, you know, I, I work with somebody who is gifted in, in, with doing temp visual effects. Uh, would he be able to do that level of complexity in Final Cut? I was going to say there's there's probably a better tracker built into the Avid than there is in Final Cut. Like yeah. when you make a put up all of all the all the things. Um, there are third party things, but I think the Avid one's better. 
Yeah. Um, so to take it back to me in terms of what reservations I have, the first would be, uh, are there really good final cut assistants? You're shaking your head. That's a deal breaker. I'll tell you right now, then, then no, I'm not going to, because yeah, again, sec, I did, they did the banker on final cut. I think there are, I don't think there are many, but I think there are two or three, you know, there's a handful of people who there's can come handful, and assist that's not and, zero. And, and that's true. And then they'll do it really, they'll do it really well, but there there's the, there has not been any effort put in to, uh, to building that army that's required because if you or I are editing something uh, or being an assistant on something and we get hit by a train and we need to be replaced, we need to be replaced now. And so that part of it is, uh, that couldn't happen. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say there are zero. I would say there are a small handful. Uh, yeah. But that, that is a factor and those small handfuls have to be available at the time you need them. And for yeah. a big movie, they have to be good. Not talking big movie. I get that. I don't. I don't yeah. think someone's going to take this for a big film with multiple yeah. editors and that. But for a smaller, for an indie film, is what I'm talking yeah. about. I think it's yeah. absolutely doable. Or even a studio film with one, you know, a single editor, single assistant kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, again, I'll, I'll just simply say I had the luxury on this project uh, that Michael, your, you know, supervising. Sure. And taking care of that, I don't have to. I don't have to worry that this project is going to be a train wreck when it needs to be turned over. Um, Let's rephrase them. What if you were doing? You have a project that's going to start in two months. You're the sole editor. It's your choice, and there is a qualified assistant available. And you still may say no, but let's take that part out of the equation for this. Okay. In that scenario, the the two sort of remaining reservations. And again, this is, this is more a factor of experience that, than the nature of Final Cut. One is I haven't witnessed uh, a show turned over and completed mm -hmm. through Final Cut. So there is, there is a natural wariness. Whereas again, I've spent over 20 years, I know that, that you know, what's done in Abbott gets turned over and will be completed. There's going to be no hiccups. There's going to be no headaches. The second thing relates to me, which is I haven't had to do notes. Mm -hmm. How fast and efficient will I be? Like right now, again, I had the luxury. I'm just sitting in my house. Yeah. I'm going at my own pace. I'm making my own decisions. But when I have to start moving things around, I haven't experienced that yet in Final Cut to know how efficiently I'll do it. And I would suspect that, that again, given my initial uh, experience with Final Cut, that I would figure it out and I'd be efficient. But until I experience something, I'm always reticent to, to say, hell yes. Sure, uh, are again, you talking about, you're talking about the experience of having someone sitting over your shoulder saying, yeah. okay, let's try this, do that, do this, okay, yeah. Yeah, just, and that's, exactly. that's just yeah, I think that's just like fluidity and experience and confidence but in what you're doing on your part. When you talk about finishing a show, really briefly, you'll need a third party tool to, or you can do users all free, but really there's a third party tool to get it to Pro Tools. And it's a dream that works really easily. And uh, the uh, and for you're not really going to finish on Avid with this, but you can send to Resolve for color correct and for that piece of cake. You're not there yet. We'll get you there. Yeah, but, again, that, it, but but that again, you haven't seen that. It. That's what I'm saying about uh, the reservations I have. Sure, you are someone who knows what the hell he's doing. I have. But I had to do it the first time. I had to for the very first time send something, and that's where I called Matt Storff. How do I get this to Pro Tools? How do I get it to the mixer? How do I get it to the colorist? So, right, it's but, a small army, but a very small number of people who can do it. But they are they do exist, and, and we're trying to help that number grow. Yeah, again, I think to to what you're saying, Mike, uh, the army needs to be built before yeah. this has any chance of sort of claiming any victories. Because I because again, that alone tells me. As much as for me personally, for this project, which is a is an ultra low budget project that a friend is doing, 
there is no there's no studio pressure this is fine am i gonna like am i gonna compromise any relationship i have with a filmmaker to 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 venture down this without a safety net of of, um a really experienced person that that can shepherd this safely to to finishing no way in hell yeah despite the despite the liberating experience again i can't I don't know if we've done a good enough job explaining how liberating trackless editing is. It is incredibly liberating. Michael, you're the one again that had said, all you need to do folks is make certain that when you import in sound effects, you assign it a role designated as an effect. Mm -hmm. When you bring in music, you assign it a role music. When you bring in, temp ADR, ADR, you assign it a role ADR. So at the back end, all of those things will automatically be categorized and dealt with uh, in the appropriate way when you turn it over. So I don't even, I, like, as long as I remember to do that, I don't even think about, oh, uh, where do I have to put a sound effect? Where do I have to put music? Where do I put temp ADR? I don't think yeah. about any of that. And I'm not worried that there's going to be consequences down the line because again, by having assigned it its specific role and Michael telling me just do that, I already know it will it will sort itself out on the back end. That's liberating. Yeah. Um, so it's not to put everyone to sleep. Should we do a little uh, you know, a little wrap up? We should uh, do a wrap up. Yeah, I think um I mean, it pleases me, Greg, to see that you've uh, embraced it and that you're finding your way and that you're having questions, which is natural and because it's a little bit, uh, it's unusual for your, to your experience. And so uh, what are your, what, what words do you have to say to the people out there who are thinking about doing it? Do it. Again, very succinctly, um, I, I've loved the experience so far. I, I, I was so happy Within a week, I wasn't thinking about, you know, I, I occasionally I hit certain things that would frustrate me. Um, and, and I will say, by the way, and I don't know if it's me, the help manual blows. I can't stand it. Huh. Uh, like I would, I would, even something like clear out point, mm-hmm. it would, I, I'd get gobbledygook. Huh. I, I couldn't, I couldn't find out how to clear an out point. And, and uh, I, option there, O, I think. I tried that. I don't think it worked. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I, I did something wrong. But my point is with the, the help manual, it, it just could be me. Maybe I'm just not phrasing the, the questions correctly. I would ultimately, uh, a handful of times, I would try the manual. It wouldn't work. And I would just go to the internet and, and try and find the answer that way. The, the other manual. I'm glad that you said that because that's another dig on one of Yanovich's favorite things, which is the nomenclature that <laughs> Yep. doesn't make sense to some people. So you're becoming adept at editing and some of the naming, you couldn't find what you were looking for because it was called something else, probably. Yeah. I, I still so, have a lot of issue with them calling sequences projects. I think it's oh, nothing but create confusion in the editing world. It, there's no that's li- this is live confusion, people. Live yes. confusion. It is. It we're causes problems. The hot, the call it a sequence of timeline. You can't call it a problem. Yeah. It, uh, that's rant. <laughs> That's a rant you know I can go off easily. And I'm going to go off because I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Every time I create a new project, mm-hmm. I'm like, what am I creating again? Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm it's, sorry. There are so many wonderful features. Yeah. That one is idiotic. I have not let it go after five years of editing on it. It still makes me angry. It's like, you have to change the name. Just yes. give up, change it. Call it a sequence or timeline. I don't care, but you can't call it a project. It's not a project. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Okay. All right. We're all, we're all in agreement there. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, Greg, thank you for your time. It's been super cool uh, hearing about your experience and I'm glad it's going well. And, uh, you know, Yanovich, what can I say? Here we Look are. You. You're adorable. Hi, baby case. <laughs> I, I'm going to leave the room and leave you guys. Thank all you right. guys. See you later. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Mike. Bye. My pleasure. Thanks, guys.